guys, and welcome to a new lesson I'm going to start on Might and Magic 10 Legacy. Um, interesting. Uh, I have played a little bit of this, so I know what I'm doing. I've got like, the base mechanics of it down. Uh, fairly difficult in comparison to some games. On the other hand, I have never actually played another Might and Magic game. So, I have no, no real idea how difficult this is. I'm going adventure because I'm bad. Default's no fun. Random is pretty cool. Let's go manual, because why not? Let's have a human. Uh, oh, human free mage, they're pretty cool. You can be him, and he will be Fringe. If I can smell Fringe right. Fringe. I think he was cynical, because why not? Um, I want you to have Dark Magic, because I know that's a really good one. Uh, Celestial. Mm. That's better in my opinion. If you gust ice bolt entangle. Along with Should I go daggers for him? Arcane discipline. Hmm. Yeah, this first uh I'll I'll kind of explain what I'm doing in a like when we get into the game, because this is just random crap, and I'm probably going to do everything wrong, and people will shout at me. I'll go for that as well, why not? <sighs> um, he's magic based, so these are what he needs, really. Next character, he's done. Let's go for a elf. And a vein value, okay. Hmm, I would go for a druid punk or mage. Go for a ranger. Or a blade dancer. Yeah, let's go for a blade dancer. Hmm, could be he just stays him, he's pretty cool. Heroic, whatever. So you get swords and dual wield. Good. What does he recommend? Those. Okay, so that's endurance and dodge. Yeah, I'm fine with that, actually. Sure. What is it? Destiny and Vity they put into. I suppose, whatever. Orc. Let's give her an orc. Orc. I need some damage, don't I? Hunter... Barbarian... Let's go for an Orc Barbarian. I never named him, did I? No. Oh well. I only need one. Named. You can be cynical as well. Uh, yep. Two-handed. What does he get? He gets that in a bow. Spears, he's pretty good with apparently. Maces. Ah, yeah, sure, whatever. I want him to be my damage dealer, so. Might and Destiny. More attack and some crit. And finally, a dwarf. Don't really have a tank, do I? Hmm. <laughs> uh, let's go for a serene priest. Hmm. That's pretty cool. Uh, skills, what skills do he have? He, had that. he can be my tank then. Okay. I have a rune priest, that seems cool. We're lacking a female. We'll have a female dwarf rune priest. A priest, I suppose. Whatever. 
Um, what did they default to? They default to D's and fire. Logical focus. Along with spears. Yeah, sure. Magic, fit, and spirit. Uh, sure. He has focus, right? Yeah, good. Eh, uh, should be alright. I need to keep him alive. <laughs> Let's start. Cutscene. What is the meaning of a dream? Only Asher knows. Are they omens warning us of future tragedies? Distant memories dying in the deafening silence of the void? Or are they sometimes both? The death wish of some ancestor bargaining with the dragons that his legacy be carried on. Last night I dreamed such a clear vision of past events. Terrible things I had wanted to forget. They refused to fade away. Demanding, pleading to be told one last time. This story begins with what we now call Uriel's Deception. During the fabled Elder Wars. Wars that once pitched the Children of the Light against the Children of Darkness. Uriel, the great Archangel, had vowed to avenge his family. Slaughtered by the greatest warrior and tactician of the Faceless, Erebos, the Master of Assassins. For centuries, Uriel, consumed by hatred, planned his revenge. Shortly before the Second Eclipse, Uriel and his Inquisitors provided proof that the Faceless were plotting to rekindle the fires of the ancient wars. Emperor Liam Falcon, an ambitious man, easily enthralled by the Archangel's righteous determination, declared a holy war against the Children of Darkness. And Uriel's own brother, the Archangel Michael, esteemed and feared general of the ancient Angel Host, was brought back from the dead to lead the onslaught. But Uriel's plan had one fatal flaw. He underestimated the courage and resourcefulness of the humans he had set out to use in his machinations. There were some who saw through his lies, seeing Uriel's proof as clever fabrications. The murders and sabotages of which the Faceless had been accused were his own doing. Angels cannot lie, or so the saying goes, but there's nothing written saying that they have to tell the truth. Uriel escaped the justice of the courts, but not the judgment of the dragons. Uriel, Michael, and the Emperor Liam perished in the bloody fires of the Second Eclipse. But a legacy remained, continuing to poison the Empire. When the true extent of Uriel's deception was revealed, the scandal nearly ripped the once great and holy nation apart. Distrust grew between the Empire and its allies. Dissentful whispers could be heard throughout the hallways of the Imperial Court. And outside of the Empire's borders, the colonies and protectorates were clamouring for independence. In an effort to calm the troubled waters, Liam's heiress, the young Empress Gwendolyn Falcon, proclaimed a series of reforms that were immediately unpopular with the more conservative nobles. These tensions came to a head in the Ajin Peninsula. Once a jewel of the Falcon Crown, the great port of Carthal on the Savage Sea, was threatening to secede and join the loose coalition of the free cities. Skirmishes were multiplying between the rebels and imperial garrisons, brigands were stalking the trade routes, and pirates were raiding the coasts. This is a story of a particular group of adventurers who had just set foot on the peninsula for the first time on a quest to fulfill the dying wish of their mentor. They were called raiders but would soon be known as legends. Well, that was interesting. I actually, that was actually quite insightful, but there was one mistake there. I'm not going to say what it was, but there was. I saw it. Do not let the name Ooh. Raiders fool you. They were not mere brigands or adventurers, only interested in glory and gold. They believed in a higher calling, an ideal of honor and courage. These values were the legacy of their mentor, Owen, a raider himself, 
and a veteran of the Battle of Hammer Fall. I see. In a way, it was also their mentor who had led them to the Ajin Peninsula. He had been a son of Carthal, and before his tragic death, he had asked his students to bring back his ashes to the city of his birth, to be buried next to his ancestors. Right. To honor their master's wish, they boarded the first ship willing to take them to the west. As they disembarked in the small, peaceful harbor of Sorpical by the Sea, they could not suspect how far this journey was going to take them. I see. Well, that is our first episode, which was just character creation. When we come back, we'll go into the town and explore a little bit and probably start the first dungeon. So, thanks for watching, and I will see you all next time. Let's make sure this saves. Save. Sure. And I will see you next time. I've just said that twice, but hey-ho. Bye.